This is Tim from ContentStack. And in this video, we will discuss the rich text editor field in the ContentStack CMS. So this field is super feature rich. You can do a bunch of things as a content editor, including selecting other entries or images from an external source. But then for developers, it has a lot of features as well. So you can really control exactly what the HTML looks like that comes out of it. And this is of course very important for let's say your SEO or accessibility, things like that. So let's dive into it. So we're in the browser here. And so let's first just have a look at how you configure this field. So we're in the schema editor. And so when I open it up, this is just a normal schema editor for a field, but then there's this extra thing here for plugins. And so all these plugins come from our marketplace. And so even this one, it's not the marketplace, but from developer hub, it's one that I made myself. So this is not a video about that, but you can also make your own plugins specifically to suit your needs. Um, so for now I have selected Cloudinary as an external dam system. So I can select images directly from there. And we have the AI assistant to kind of help me write. So let's have a look at the advanced field here. So you can set up the height because of course, rich text editors um, sometimes need a little bit more space. And so it feels less cramped to edit. So you can actually set that height. And so I prefer to be super high actually. And so there's a few settings of how you can set it up. You can just do basic, which only gives you like inline related things or like some you know, block stuff, but not too much, right? So you have your headings, your bold, your italics, all the basics essentially. Then when you go to advanced, it's kind of similar, but then you also have more rich media related things like images, videos, tables, those kind of things. And after that you have advanced or sorry, custom. And here you can select exactly which ones you want. And this is actually pretty important because sometimes you might not want content editor to add a header one in a rich text field because potentially that header one is already somewhere on your page and two header ones is just bad for accessibility, bad for Google, things like that. So here you have some control. And so other than all this, there's also a bunch of options. So you can also embed objects. And so these objects are other content types or entries that you can reference from your rich text, either as a link to it. So you exactly have a super easy way to create a link to another page or actually as a full embed. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I can actually embed other pages into my rich text. We'll show you how that works in code in a second. And so, and these are the, you know, the, the normal fields that you can always add. So um, let's just have a look at what this thing looked like. looks like. Okay. So we don't have to save because, you know, I did all the changes that I needed. Um, here you go. So I have now set it to auto grow. So this is the only thing now. And you can see when I select this, you already directly get this, you know, custom thing for the AI assistant, but I can also just select Cloudinary. It asks me to log in. Um, we'll do that in a sec when we start editing more. Um, so you have all these extra fields here. Right, so I can embed an entry or I can, you know, create a new entry to embed later, which is like make a new page. And of course you have all your default things. You have all your, you know, headers, paragraphs, things like that, right? You can start typing, you can do just all the normal things you would always do in one of those rich text editors. And of course there's now like empty lines and things like that. You can do a bunch of stuff. And so, um, let's go to another screen that I've set up where you can look at 50, 50 at how, um, the code looks versus how the rich text editor looks. So let's zoom back to the default and close this. And so we're now 50, 50. And so this one looks like this. And of course this, this is that header one thing I talked about, right? So we have the title here and I just rendered this normally in my code. I don't want my rich text editor to do that. So in my case, there is no header one selection. Um, so when you look at the code, I've already kind of cleaned this up. Well, maybe not the cleanup is not, might not be the right word. I made some opinion of how I want this to look and you can do that with code. And so before we dive into how that works, um, let's first add a few things in here 
So then we can figure out what that code actually does. And so you can see there's my div, I call it pros because when I use Tailwind, I like to use that class. There's my paragraph and strong and all of that is just coming out of the rich text editor. So how about let's add a reference now to another entry. So let's embed an entry to the about page. So I've now added this. Well, if I hit publish here, there it is. Um, so now this is looking like, hey, there's an about page title here now. How I've done that, I'll show you in a second. So let's just add a few things, right? Let's add an image as well. So let's choose from assets and add an image. And we can actually uh, change how that image looks. So let's make it um, not in line. I just kind of want it to be a block level, but you could also align it to things like that. And you can also say, well, let's make it like small like this. Let's hit publish here. Right, let's refresh. And there is our image. So when we look at our HTML, you can see my header three here. And this image tag, I've also changed with it, with my code to make it like load lazy, fetch priority auto, all that stuff I've added. So out of the box, that might be different. So again, we're gonna have a look at that in a sec. So now let's add a Cloudinary image. Of course, I'm going to have to log in, but that's all doable. Here we go. So let's just select any image I find here. Let's do the Corgi, because why not? And so this now functions like relatively similarly to how um, you know the normal assets work. And then also from here, you can actually edit the image and do a bunch of stuff to it. And what's very interesting here is because Cloudinary gives you this whole JSON object with all this data that you get. And whatever we add here kind of overrides that. And so you, let's say we can actually add like an alt. And this will now override whatever came out of Cloudinary. This is of course specific to that marketplace app and how this was integrated. So let's send all of this. Let's refresh on this side. And here is now also our Cloudinary. So let's just add a few more small things so that we can then fix in our code. Let's say I add a add a few empty lines. And so lots of content editors might do this, but in your front end, you kind of don't want that, right? And so when I hit publish now, you actually see that we don't have these empty paragraphs here now for these empty lines, because I actually fixed that up in my code. If there's a paragraph with an empty line of text, I'm just gonna remove that in the code. All right, so now that we have this, let's have a look at that code. So first, let me just turn off all the code that I'm adding to convert this whole thing. So let's now do it without the code. And this is what's coming out. So essentially, this rich text editor outputs JSON. And this is a document JSON that has a bunch of children. And each child is like, okay, this is a paragraph with some text. And at this point, when I say the word rich, it actually has to be italic, right? You can see that here. Right, rich is italic, and then text editor is bold. And so then we go empty space, and then text editor, bold is true. And so there's this whole language that basically just refers exactly to what um, HTML is about. And you can see here, there's a paragraph with no text. And then there's a paragraph with D, and then there's the paragraph with no text again. And so that's essentially this, right? And of course, then we go to our reference, oops. So here we have our reference to the entry ID that we want to do something with. Then there's a reference to our image because adding an image is also a reference because an image is another thing. And then we have our Cloudinary and on and on. And so this JSON, when you give this to a utility function that we have in our delivery SDK, you can actually change this into HTML. And even if I didn't do anything, it would still do that. So if I just uncomment this bit and say, okay, I want to use my content tag utility JSON to HTML function. And I want the entry, like I just queried specifically this entry, right? So I basically just get the entry and get my field name. So I called this content. You can see that here. So this field is actually has a content ID. Um, and then let's not add this render option for the moment. 
So let's not add any of our custom stuff. If I just did this, so I said, this is the result of my query. This is the field I want you to change JSON to HTML for. This is what's gonna happen. So this now came out. You see, no Cloudinary, because it doesn't actually know what HTML Cloudinary is because it's a marketplace app. And so this is actually pretty interesting here that it did do the image. But then here, this is this about page and it says content type page. Because it doesn't really know what to do with that embed because you haven't really done something with that. So it just says, this is the embed HTML that we think that might work. And so that's why you are able to, you know, change all that stuff. So now let's put this back and have a look at what I'm actually coding here. So this render option is for every paragraph, I'm gonna get the node function and then the next function. The node is actually an array, so the specific JSON. And next is a function to redo all this for if there are children inside. And so what I'm doing now, well, if the text of this node child is actually empty, I'm just not gonna return any HTML. And otherwise, I'm gonna return my paragraph. So when we clean that up, um, you see, that there are no empty paragraphs here at all. And that's super handy, so you can actually clean up all the things that you want. But for example, if I had a link in here, other than having like the default link, what I want is this, the rel no opener and no follow. That's like some SEO kind of thing that Google wants you to do. So for every link in the node, you can see I get the URL and all the other you know, attributes that I might need. And then I just add this myself. And so you can really control what this looks like. If you, for example, had maybe a Next.js link component, that could come out of here as well, which is very interesting, right? Because then suddenly you can say, well, maybe I want you to prefetch everything in this link. And so you can control that. And so here are some other ones. So you, have, you can also say specifically for block level components, this is my page, which is an entry. And so you can see, I already did a console log here of that entry. And so before in the JSON, we only saw the entry ID, but nothing else. But this function, when it finds one of those entries that you have embedded, let's say the other page, this will actually query for you based on the knowledge it has from your stack. And so of course I've set up my stack here with my API key, my token, things like that. And so this will query that for me. And so that's where you get, I can just console log it. And so let's let's have a look at what that console log actually did. So what came out on the server end is all this stuff. So you can see title about page. Of course, this doesn't have like a description or anything else. It's just title and rich text. And the content of that about page in JSON is actually here. So this is what the about page looks like. So, so you see, this is yet another rich text field, which is actually similar to this one, but I just added it in the about page. And so with that, I can make you know, this header work. So I can just you know give me the title if it exists, for example. And of course, in real life, you're not gonna console log that, but it's just to show you. And so I have two more that I wanna talk about today because this video is getting quite long. Um, so for Cloudinary, so I added that, you know, that, that little marketplace app. And now I can say, well, just from the node, I get a bunch of information about Cloudinary. So we can actually have a look. So now this is what we're getting from Cloudinary. You see the type is Cloudinary. And so it has a bunch of information that Cloudinary gives you. And so with that, you can do a bunch. Like I have my URL, my secure URL, my you know, my image type, my alt, all that stuff. And so now I've actually just, ma I just make a custom image tag that has like width, height, source, and alt, and a loading is lazy. But of course, if you know Cloudinary a little bit, in this source, you can add a bunch of different things from like width and height, but also cropping, optimizations, whatever you want to do. And so now you have all the control that you need to actually then render that image tag. And um, so now that this code is running, this Cloudinary image actually appears, right? So this actually comes from a Cloudinary URL. So if we wanted to open that, you see, this is Cloudinary. Um, so let's have a look at what this image actually does. And so this is display. And I just wanted to show you something that's slightly more fancy. You can also just return a function here and do all the things that you want. So that function is here. So I'm, I'm just sending it the asset and the metadata. And from all this information, 
I'm just figuring out, okay, what's my link base? And then I add a bunch of things that I want to have appended to every image I add in my rich text. So in this case, I want it to be the width of 800 and the height of 450. And it has to be an AVIF file in the quality of 90 and do not upscale, please. And so with that, I can add like all the things I want, right? I can just make like a, a CSS class, width and height, loading lazy. And so now I have complete control over every image that's put in here. And of course this image can also be like an inline image. So you could potentially just inside an inline element. Now you can add uh, the display here and do the things you want for inline images. And my AI is even suggesting some stuff, but let's not go there now. And so um, this is what I wanted to show you today. So it means you have all the you know, necessary features and functions and hooks that you need to really customize whatever comes out of this rich text field. Um, and so with this, you can allow content editors to kind of just do whatever they want. You get it here, you clean up whatever it is. And so also, please don't make sure that you don't through your code, tell content editors what to do, right? So that you see that happen once in a while where if you want to have, let's, let's say a code block or something, and then you, if you don't have this HTML rendering thing, you might have to tell your content editors, yeah, if you go in and look at the HTML and change some things and then it looked good. Well, now with this, you don't have to do that. You just let them add the code block and select code block in the rich text. And then you add the syntax highlighting from here. And so um, there you go. Uh, happy coding and feel free to join our Discord and link below and read all the documentation and visit our academy to learn more about all those types of things. Cheers. Happy coding.